Do you believe belief is important? What comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Belief is supernatural. If you think about it, there is really no reason on earth why a biological, a biological organism would ever evolve by natural processes to the point where it could contemplate and consider things outside of the natural physical world. No, the capacity to believe is a supernatural gift given to us by God. Belief determines our perceptions of reality. Belief shapes every thought, decision and action. Belief defines the parameters of what is possible. Belief emerges from the soul, from that inner core of our be being that defines uh, who we, uh, we are and what we do. Belief even alters the, con uh, the counter of eternity. Why is belief so amazingly important? I think it's because belief is the bridge to a real relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Relationships can either be based on works and legal legalism for belief and grace. When Jesus was asked what works God requires in our relationship with him, Jesus answer, answer must have stunned them. Then they asked him, why must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. Jesus knows that life transformation does not come from your performance, but it comes from your belief in him. Jesus knows that if you trust him, your works, your works will be a natural extension of the relationship with, uh, you have with him. What was a radical shift in thinking back then, and it still is today. Jesus, am I really doing the work? the work God requires when I believe in you. Transform my mind according to this truth. Lord, I don't want to be conformed to their ways of the world. I want the kind of belief that sets me free by setting you free to live through me. Give me that kind of belief according to the truth of your word. Amen. Eternal life now. No government ever voluntarily reduces itself in size. Government programs once launched then disappear. Actually, a government barrier is the nearest thing to eternal life we will ever see on this earth. Okay, so that's a clear quote. But it is not entirely true. Yes, government programs seem to never die, but eternal life for us. We can see that on earth. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Now this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. On earth, our, abil our ability to know Christ is clouded by our flesh, the world and the devil. But it, that is not always going to be the case. For, the, for we know in part and we uh, pro, uh, prophecy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect appear, disappears. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, ever, even as I am fully known. Belief is the key 
that opens the door that starts the relationship clouded as it may be uh, while stuck in physical bodies on this earth your belief is Christ beings eternal life now through a relationship with, uh, with God based on grace and love rather than fear and performance a relationship that will now perfection soon enough Jesus I absolutely thank you and praise you saved by my belief in you and what you have done for me on the cross thank you that my belief opens up the door to know you and experience you now in the days and months ahead open your word to me in new ways so that i might believe more clearly and know you more intimately hallelujah amen believe in the trenches faith certainly tells us what the sense do not but not the contrary of what they see it's above not against them sometimes all this talk about belief starts to feel kind of fuzzy and out there thankfully scripture has given us many many flesh and blood examples of what belief can look like in my opinion Sarah and Abraham are great examples not because they believe in God was perfect but because they are such a good example of this struggle to take God and his word when we pick up their story in Genesis they are they are way beyond a midlife crisis there are a nice couple but they are coming up on their hunt, uh, hundreds birthdays and they don't have any children a major donor particularly in their culture where status was directly linked uh, to offspring at this point it's it's game over but then God makes a promise a promise so unbelievable that it shook their belief to the core Abraham fell face down and God said to him as for me this is my covenant with you you will be the father and many nations no longer will you be called Abraham your name will be Abraham for I have made you a father of many nations I will make you very faithful I will make nations of you and kings and kings will come from you that's a lot uh, to dump on a man who is the 99 years old we, we will watch their belief unfold in the passages ahead but what uh, what about you this same God has given us a lot of promises through the prophets the pro- apostles and his son but how do you respond to promises that seem to impossible to be true what are the boundaries of your belief God of Abraham, show me just one place where my beliefs do not line up with who you are. Show me a promise that I don't have the faith to claim. Then take me beyond those boundaries into a deeper walk with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you wagering without hesitation? Belief is a wise wager. Granted that faith cannot be pr- uh, proved, what harm will come to you if you gamble on its truth and its and it proves false? If you ch- 
Jane. You, Jane, all. If you lose, you lose nothing. Wager then without the hesitation that he exists. Sarah and Abraham faced a crisis of belief when God promised them the impossible. Through, uh, though nearly 100 years old, <coughs> God told Abraham that he would be the father of many nations. The Apostle Paul was an offspring of one of, the, uh, one of those uh, nations in Romans 4 Paul gives com commentary on Abraham and the details of his belief he Abraham is our father in the in the sight of God in whom we believed that God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Abraham and Sarah didn't have a lot of confidence, but their confidence was in the right place. That's the most important aspect of belief, that we believe in God. Belief is confidence in a powerful person. When you place your trust in Him to do what He promises to do for you, in you, and through you, then you find true peace and the freedom to obey. That's why it's so critical that you understand who God is and who, has had, uh, who He has revealed himself to be because it's not just your belief that matters it's your belief in him that makes all the differences God I am growing in my confidence that you are all powerful where do you want me to wager without hesitation that you exist amen comfort in your pain. Faith is the refusal to panic. Life is difficult and life is painful. Contrary to popular belief, God never promised that life would be pain-free. He does, however, promise to be present in the midst of the pain. If we believe that, I may really believe it, it gives comfort and hope. Sarah and Abraham were unquestionably hurting over their childernness. A hurt and heart act felt by many today too. I am sure that decade after decade Abraham had hope only to have his dreams crushed again and again. God does not promise offspring to all of us but he did promise them to Abraham would Abraham be willing to risk the pain in in pain and hope again against all hope Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations I don't know what issues you are facing today I don't know where you have been or what the future looks like from uh, where you stand. But if you have opened your life to Jesus Christ, I don't know that God is with you and in you right now. When you unleash that truth is in your soul, true comfort can be found in the midst of any pain you are en enduring because not only is a belief a confidence in a powerful person but belief is comfort in the midst of pain lord you told us that we would have difficulty and pain in this 
life. I believe that. You also promised that you would bring comfort and peace in it. I believe that too. There we, I have lost hope. I ask that you would give me the faith to live according to your promises. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Honesty in your belief. If you really believe, they must only believe that they believe. I love learning about faith from people like Abraham and Sarah because sometimes words like belief and faith imply that we are supposed to ignore the obvious and deny reality. Belief doesn't ignore the facts. The facts, the the, it faces the facts and then applies faith. Belief is candid, uh, candid about perplexing problems. Abraham was very objective about this, his problem. He assessed the situation for what it was. Without awakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. As we do through life, our hopes and dreams are often shattered, like in fine china falling against cold uh, concrete. What a difference it makes when we face those bitter realities head on. Instead of this integrating under the stress, we can apply accurate biblical truth to the situation. God's word gives us the perspective that was, that we need to put the facts in their place so that we can respond in faith to, to what God says is true. Holy Spirit, I don't want to just say I believe something when I really don't. And I don't want my belief to become some sort of blind faith where I lose connection with reality. But I do want my belief in what's true about you to be the most important factor in my life. Thank you for giving me that kind of faith. Amen. Where you are in your belief today. We cannot exercise our faith beyond what we believe to be possible. Sometimes belief is raised up as a measure of a spiritual character and that can put a lot of pressure on a person. The super elite spiritual people supposedly have a lot of it and the rest of us losers just struggle to hang on to the little bit that we have. First of all, that totally doesn't fit what Jesus taught about faith and mustard seeds. Second, it doesn't reflect the fact that many of the main characters in the Bible rod, roller coasters of belief most of their lives, and yet God moved through many of them in mighty ways, and it doesn't fit with another observation Paul makes about Abraham and his belief. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith. Faith is something that is straightened over time. You don't get one shot that lasts your whole life. Do you know how long Sarah and Abraham waited for God to fulfill his promise? Almost 13 years. 
Abe and the Sarah weren't traveling to the best infertility clinics in Palestine all these years. They weren't getting their reading from the lab or trying various procedures at the, their age. It's doubtful they could, they could do anything. No, they were just waiting, taking care of the flocks, keeping the tent dust free, cooking meals, cleaning dishes, and waiting. 13 years is a long time, plenty of time of, for Abraham's faith to be made stronger than it was at the time he received the promise. And remember, at the, at the time of the promise, he had plenty of questions and doubts. What do we learn from this? Belief is consistent in uh, its progress. That courages of me, that means that where I am today in my belief is not where I will have to be tomorrow. I have a full lifetime to be strengthened in faith and to be bolstered uh, in my belief. So do you. God of grace, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you that the little bit of faith I do have is enough because you are so perfectly faithful. Continue to strengthen me, uh, my faith today, so my belief can progress cons uh, consistently. Amen.